Welcome, everyone, to Midday Magazine for this April 3rd, 2024. I have your host, James J. here, and we are welcoming in our studio today our friends from the Wood County Sheriff's Department. We have Quentin Ellis with us. Good uh, good, after- good afternoon, Quentin. Good to have you with us. Good morning. And we have Scott Goldberg with us as well. Scott, good to see you. Hey, good morning. Appreciate both of you guys being here. Uh, big shout out to uh, Sheriff Sean Becker for being uh, with us as well. Uh, not with us, but of course, Sean- Sean's always here pretty much. Right. Uh, in pre- his, 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 his presence is felt. Uh, no, we appreciate him setting this up as always in the good work there and obviously a big thank you to our friends at wisconsin rabbits community media appreciate you guys very much do yourself a favor go to youtube type into your search bar wisconsin rabbits community media and subscribe to the great work they are doing uh guys how you doing how's things going uh quentin start with you i'm doing real well uh just pass along that uh sean is sorry he can't be here uh he's uh with some of our other command staff at a trauma-informed <laughs> leadership training over in green bay so um really furthering what we do um so one of our focuses at the department is leadership development at, at all levels and, and being in tune with, you know, the, the changes in the workforce and, and dealing with people that, you know, are, are dealing with trauma, whether it be at home, in the workplace, and, and being able to uh, be better for them. So shout out to him for doing that. Um, took our operations captain, Charlie Hugestegger, uh, Patrol Lieutenant Calvin Thorhorst, and a member from uh, Human Resources as well at the county over there. So they braved the roads this morning, headed over to Green Bay right into the heart of some of this. But uh, He makes it hard to give him a hard time. He like, does. You know, like, I'm all set to like, oh, you know, joke around. Oh, yep. so I should, and then I hear something like that. I'm like, yeah. I can give him a hard time. For that. That's amazing. Times. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah still, thank you, thank you, thank you. you still can, James. I mean, yeah. like he, he enjoys that as much as the other. He certainly dishes it, so uh, um, that I'd is, encourage it. Right on. Uh, that is that is really cool, though. I, you know, this is something that we don't get to talk about with law enforcement nearly enough, the continuing of education. Uh, we're going to actually touch on this a little bit with some tech uh, news that we want to get into. But it, it's it's one of those ends uh, sections of the job that we never really cover. I can't imagine how many classes or how many programs that you guys do uh, over the years in the training that you take. And I don't know if that this is necessarily every officer that does this, but it sure seems like uh, whether it's an officer or it's somebody in the sheriff's department, you're continuing that education. Yeah, the state has requirements uh, that every officer mm, yeah. in order to read turn or retain their certification in the state uh has 24 hours of of training a year and some of those are are very specific in what they have they have a handgun qualification course uh evoc which is like the pursuit driving um has to have four hours every two years and um that outside of that they they do encourage the the refreshers and dat and the you know some of the hard skills that we do what they don't really have a um, mandate on yet is the soft skills hmm. and that's where uh, i'm really proud of our department um in that we are picking up the ball and running with that um sean has really brought that uh again he wanted me to mention this week our 13th crisis intervention team training is taking hmm. place over at east junior high um the vast majority of our staff sworn and civilian have been through that. Um, we're just getting new people caught up to that. Um, and that that is expanding on within those 24 hours. Uh, it's kind of left up to agencies on what they want to do. Some mm. people eat that up on legal updates and more of the hard police skills, if you will. Yeah. And, and we certainly do focus on that. We have a lot mm. of uh, areas of, of expertise within our department, whether it be computer forensics, um, instructors in those areas, um, some of the technology stuff we're going to talk about. Um, but uh, we're, we're very focused on mental health, not only uh, in the community, but as, as well as our staff, our leadership teams. Um, so we, we dedicate a lot of our, our training hours to that. We got to uh, let Scott get out of here pretty soon, so we got to get to him. But I, I think maybe we can get into that a little bit more later, if you don't mind, Quinn. I, I'd really I like know. to. I think that's a fun one to get, get into and, and really interesting to the audience. They, they don't know a lot of that stuff. Sure. But we, uh, we're we going to start with tech uh, until I derailed us. We, uh, <laughs> but but um, we, there is some really interesting things going on with you guys with uh, the tech uh, over there. Absolutely. And I'll let Scott speak to the, the first part of it. Um, we have a very exciting time at the Sheriff's Department um, working uh, collaboratively with our county board to secure funding uh, for some technology projects that were, were overdue, um, and we're catching up with the times. Um, Scott will talk about the Flock uh, camera system that uh, we're working to get implemented, and then I'll follow up later with uh, an axon, we call it an officer safety bundle uh, of technology that, uh, that we're working on currently as well. Excellent. Yeah, Scott? I think I think just just so that the audience understands what Flock is, uh, I had no idea what Flock was yeah. just a few years ago, um, and then um, we were lucky enough to start utilizing it. Um, um, occasionally um, because our county didn't have any so what it is is it's a it's a set of cameras that basically go around um, 
different locations throughout the county. Hmm. Um, we're starting out with five in our county. Um, four of them are going to be stationary, two on the north end, um, and then two on the south end of the county. And then we have one mobile camera. And what these cameras do is they have a, the capability to um, do a license plate read, um, which is important, um, but they also record um, video footage of those vehicles. Hmm. Um, so um, just to give an example of what that, what that ha why that's important is if we have a crime that takes place, let's just say just past the roundabout here, and mm -hmm. let's say one of those cameras was posted yeah. um, nearby, yeah. um, as that person drives by, it'll, it'll um, obtain that license plate oh. um, and then um, save it for a period oh. of time, up to 30 days. Oh. Um, so that becomes very important, obviously, when we're trying to solve crimes. The other thing that is probably more, uh, it, it's almost more important, is we can put an alert out. So we can log into this website, and one of our officers, and, and, and all of our officers will have access to it, including our dispatch center. Yeah. We can, if let's say we have, let's just say a child abduction, yeah. and, but we have a plate to that. Yeah. Um, we can put that plate number in, and then if, if that vehicle drives past one of the cameras that's stationary, um, it'll notify dispatch and all the officers that are working that that vehicle's been spotted. Wow. And so it's not just child abduction. I mean, this could be as simple as a gas drive off that sure. we can utilize. Yeah. Um, we like to talk about the big stuff, you know, child mm -hmm. abductions or homicides mm -hmm. or things like that, but we'll be utilizing it for um, all different types of crimes. We've already utilized it for different types of crimes. Um, we don't have these um, cameras yet. They're, they're, we're working on getting them installed, but communities around us um, have them, hmm. and so we're able to log in and still get those alerts and still be utilizing them to solve crimes. Hmm. Uh, Scott, this is fascinating to me and really interesting, uh, in part because we've gotten comfortable with cameras on our, our signs and different things, uh, and I think a lot of us can just assume that this is re law-related or helps you guys in your task and your job. To hear some of the details of this new or this new tech is really interesting to me. And I, I there's a, a couple of things that really stood out to me. The, the saving it for 30 days. I don't know. That seems new. Uh, that, that that the previous programs didn't do that. That seems really really helpful, especially with every second counts whatever the crime is. We've heard it our whole lives with when it comes to a homicide or a missing person. But that's every case. Uh, it, it, the, 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 as soon as the clock starts ticking, everything is you know you, you've got to get that information as soon as you can. So there's that part of it too. Um, it's interesting about the missing persons. Or, or the abductions. That part of this is a really interesting part of it to me that uh, maybe we get um, better Maybe maybe we 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 create more uh, uh, you know solvings of those cases and and uh, more I can't imagine because the thing that I keep thinking about is the stuff we're not even thinking about yet. Right. This happens with tech all the time. We we start with this idea and we find out oh we can do this with it too. We can do this and with something like this with law enforcement involved, I can only imagine the the things that'll come of it over the years. And one of the things I think um, we. I had concerns about because you know all these projects and you you involve tech it's expensive right yeah. and so you want to get the best bang for your buck mm -hmm. out of it and if we can solve crimes and um, by doing this and so time was a big thing like yeah. how fast do we actually get these reads so mm -hmm. um, during this um, obviously they give you the sales pitch right yeah, and yeah, you always yeah. wonder right mm -hmm. and so one of our neighboring um, departments already got already have their cameras up mm -hmm. and I was speaking with them about that mm -hmm. and they put a test run and their cameras got going before they even went live with it they put one of their squads license plates in and then drove past nice. within a second or two they are already received notification on mm. this what they call a hot list that they have Whoa. that that vehicle has crossed that camera so i mean that is really fast yeah. and it'll give um our officers an ability our dispatchers will also get these alerts and be able to dispatch um our officers even if they, they're not staring at their because if they're driving they're not staring at their mm. computer screens right? right so um they'll be able to dispatch um you know maybe we have this vehicle that's involved in a burglary or um, maybe it's a vehicle that we're tracking for a drug situation. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many uses. The mm -hmm. other part that I think is important too, it has the ability, and let's say the vehicle, because what do criminals do? They're trying to get away with things, right? So maybe they, are, they, they obstruct their license plate. Mm -hmm. We can just type in, let's say a red sedan, a red, let's say, 
we can go down to the type of vehicle, like a red Kia with a sticker with in the back window. We Whoa. can log into that, and it'll show us every Kia Whoa. within a time frame huh. in those locations at that point. That's and that cool, gives us actually. a chance. <laughs> so if we have an eyewitness to a crime, let's say a burglary, for an example, and they said, well, we know it was a four-door car. We know it was a four-door car. It was gray. You know, it was too far away to get a license plate, but it had a big, huge sticker in the back window. We can put that in there, and it'll give us all the vehicles that match that description. Whoa. And then, but the cool part is, is the camera is on the roadway, near the roadway, and then we'll be able to obtain all the license plates that kind of match that vehicle. Because there might be more than one, but it gives us a starting point, which right now a lot of times we don't have. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you bring up the budget part of this. Um, you know, we just got done with an election uh, day and uh, pretty successful. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, Quentin. But um, <clears throat> we, we just saw that um, a number of different counties didn't want to didn't want okay a budget for schools and, and, and putting money into education. Uh, you guys know this better than I do and most do uh, as far as putting money into our law enforcement and getting you guys a budget because the, the 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 eyes go to the tank or go to this or that or whatever the tech part of this is something that doesn't get talked about and does is is vital going forward for our law enforcement the um the the uh, criminal element has all the budget in the world. Mm -hmm. Like they, they got no issues with that. Uh, it, we, we need to keep up to date with them, if not be ahead of them on these things. This kind of stuff helps us get closer to that. For, for instance, you know, these cameras are expensive, but um, at the scheme of, there's certain, there's departments not far from us. And I don't want to name other departments because I don't want to speak yeah, for them, yeah. but they could have put other officers on, um, but it was actually cheaper to add cameras that have 24-hour service hmm. that could give that data nonstop. So it's it's obviously important to have patrolmen out there, right? Um, but at the same time, if they can add a certain amount of cameras that give 24-hour coverage to your to your community, hmm. um, um, and and give you immediate results. Um, you're 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 actually saving money in some ways, um, and you know these cameras started out as just a community, um, and I, I sound like I'm giving a sales pitch for the cameras, <laughs> but obviously the the person that sold them to us did a good job. But yeah. um, these cameras started out um, where you'd have these high end neighborhoods that wanted mm. to know who was coming and going from their neighborhoods, and so that's how they started, and then. Uh, neighborhoods put them up and then started sharing this information with police and then that's kind of how they got the idea not to get a sidetracked again but i have been curious about this with the rise of cameras and and not just be, you know everybody on their phone having cameras but now every house has a camera uh most every doorbell nowadays has one of those cameras do you think that this uh, or does this um make it e your job I, I hate to say make your job easier that is i, I feel like i'm annoying you guys no, if no, i say that but uh it, uh, does it 100%. help does it assist your job uh, some like it really does uh, I, I was curious about work, that work smarter not harder right and right, that's what right. i was going to say if you, if you try to put a, a value to these if you did like a time value versus the wages it would take one officer to work on a, a missing or abducted child case and it's not going to be one we're going to have you know we're going to have all the resources we can uh, working on that uh, it, it wouldn't take many hours of all those resources being allocated to chasing down leads mm -hmm. that maybe the these cameras do for us in seconds yeah um where um you, you, that's a, a value, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's a tangible value. You could put hours worked versus the time this camera saved you. What is intangible, um, but more valuable is the abducted children, uh, the silver alerts, uh, mm -hmm. things like that, where we find people who are endangered because of these cameras yeah. and likely save their lives. Because yeah. child abductions, um, there's statistics that are just horrifying uh, as to how terrible and how quickly they can go that bad. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with these tools in our arsenal th throughout the nation, um, we found a, a, a child out east, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Based based off of flock cameras. Yeah. That, so that location. So um, that you can't put a value to that. No. No. Yeah. So a few years ago, we had a, a, a missing child that was found out in the New York area. That um, ultimately, we didn't even know what these cameras were at the time. Yeah. I'm sure some of our people did. I didn't. But they were utilizing those type of cameras, along with tollway cameras and things like that. I think drones are a good example of this, too, for people where most of us first heard about drones in war. 
uh, and then it started becoming a kind of a thing where you know the the guy who had um, some money had you know he had one and he was you know, flying around the neighborhood or whatever. And now we see the evolution of those where how many kids, how many silver alerts have we been able to solve because of drone footage and them seeing a land that we can't get to or something? This is the expansion of this. Uh, our society focuses so much on the negative of tech, and that's uh, that's understandable. I mm-hmm. get some of that, but th- we have to give the credit where it's due sometimes too. This is some incredible things that are happening here, and that's not the only thing there. Uh, again, thank you, Scott, for the great information. Appreciate that. Uh, Quentin, I know that you had something in the tech uh, realm that you wanted to touch on as well. Yeah, uh, the Sheriff's Department's been working on updating our uh, officer safety bundle for over three years now. Um, uh, our body cameras, our squad cameras, our electronic control devices or tasers, and the, the uh, evidence management system that all goes along with those. Um, we've been uh, fortunate uh, to have tasers in deployment since 2003. Our squad cameras uh, have been in all of our squads since about 2010, and our body cameras since 2016. So we, mm. at, at that time, we were kind of on the, on the front edge of that, but mm. it, tech is expensive to replace. Um, uh, Axon um, gives a, a bundle that we're, again, fortunate to work with our county board to secure funding for um that will replace all of our tasers with the newest technology. Mm. Um, the squad cameras are being installed as we speak over uh, at our rescue shop and all 28 of our patrol cars, our um, armored vehicle for uh, our SWAT team, mm-hmm. um, and uh, all of our body cameras will be replaced. Mm. Um, so, so another neat fact that builds on what Scott was saying with Flock is these, these squad cameras are immensely better than the ones we had installed in 2010, right? Huh. Those are end of life, um, not really supported anymore, but we limped them along. And uh, we, within hours of our first squad camera being, de- our new squad camera being deployed, it was out on patrol in the north end of the county and, and Marshfield had a pursuit. Um, our officer was going to respond to assist and um, so he's coming towards the area, and I don't know if he's at a low speed, getting ready to turn around, stop to turn around. The fleeing vehicle comes, comes at him 100 miles an hour. Hmm. This camera caught not only the vehicle, hmm. took a picture of the plate. I mean, we're talking 100 miles an hour closing speed. And That's the cam- insane. Uh, the cameras we have now, we would have been like, you see a blur. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, but it not only grabbed that plate, um, but it can interact with the flock um, system. <laughs> for any uh, flag plates that we might be looking wow. for. A homicide vehicle drives by you, yeah. you don't know about it, and it's gonna pop up on, on your machine. Um, so with with all that, I can't thank the county board enough um, because it was quite an investment. Uh, it was an impact to our budget, um, but they saw the value and the need. Mm-hmm. Um, again, to keep our officers safe. Uh, yes. The tasers are, are, are things that we hopefully don't have to use all that much, uh, mm-hmm. but it's a less lethal use of force. Um, the squad and body cameras help protect our officers, keep them safe, as well as provide transparency. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, and a neat part of that is uh, this is all cloud-based storage and mm. access now for that, for that media, where before mm. our squads would have to come in, upload, it would be on a physical server. But then if you had an open records request, James, mm-hmm. or um, you were the victim of the crime, you wanted mm-hmm. the squad footage, or even to share with our prosecutor's office, it would take our staff finding the video, exporting the file, yeah. burning a DVD, oh, wow. making a copy of the DVD, yeah. and then sending that up. So hours lost, uh, resources spent on on storage devices that you know are outdated. Yeah, like, yeah. Computers don't even come with a DVD player yeah. anymore. You yeah, know? That's right. Or yeah. a DVD drive. So <laughs> no. um, uh, again, we were fortunate to have what we did. We made it work as mm-hmm. long as we could. Um, but yeah, to, to be stepping uh, up in, into current times with this technology is just uh, just incredible. Um, another feature that comes with it, is, as awful as this may sound, it, it's great for uh, protecting our officers and providing transparency, is uh, the triggers. Um, so if Scott and I are at a scene and we have our body cameras, it used to be uh, that we would have to activate them. So mm-hmm. it was a choice to activate them. It was a memory to activate mm-hmm. them. But if I'm being attacked, I'm not thinking, oh, I better press this button right, and, and yeah. see what's going on. Um, now there are uh, deployment triggers where um, if a, a weapon's unholstered, not only my body camera immediately activates, but any of our officers in, a, in this wow. area, they activate to show that 
all, all the angles that that can be because one angle even on video can be sure, deceiving. Sure. Sure. Um, so uh, it's just a, a testament of, like you said, the technology developments. And and I thought it's funny that you asked if that was insulting to us and made our job easier. And I appreciate that. But uh, it, it works smarter, not harder. The technology is there, and uh, it'll free up a ton of time with uh, on the back end of it managing the the um, media that we have, um, even getting it to their prosecutor's office. Obviously, they need the best stuff that or the best visible evidence, all the evidence from us to best prosecute the case, and we can get it to them by sending an email link, or like so a, an cool. internet link. So um, uh, we're uh, really stepping with the times. Certainly uh, going into what we're talking about with time and, and, and getting on these things quicker and hopefully getting a case solved, that's that's key to that. The the sharing of information being a lot freer and smoother, mm-hmm. that the time saved there is more time being spent on a case. So that's key and that's important to this too. But Quentin, something that you said there that I really appreciate, and I appreciate of all of the sheriff's department so much, is bringing up the accountability for one. Mm-hmm. That's appreciated, but also giving us the other angle of that, because as a society, we focus so much on that, the the accountability end of things and wanting to make sure that you guys are doing it, blah, 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 blah. Although, you know, doesn't seem to care with other things, but that's other side subject. <laughs> but, sure. <laughs> um, but your safety should be number one, uh, 1A, one 1B. One we can chew gum and walk at the same time. Mm-hmm. We can want accountability from our officers. Like every good officer wants that too. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that nobody dislikes a bad officer more than a good officer. Like right. that's something that gets lost in the shuffle sometimes a lot, mm-hmm. but also your safety. The safer you guys are, the better you're gonna be able to do your job. Nobody can do their job well when all you're doing is worrying or, or, or nervous or stressed. Now there's enough of those things already in there, I imagine. But yeah. to, to have that uh, that 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 comfort, uh, for lack of a better word, right there, that not only it goes on for you, but your fellow officers know. Oh, uh, Quentin uh, had to pull out his gun, something like that. Like mm-hmm. that, the spreading of that information is also key to this too. Uh, the safety end mm-hmm. of things that so we don't get to touch on that very often. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. Our officers embraced it uh, when we first got body cams. There's apprehension because what if I slip up and somebody's really get my goat and I, I you know I don't. I don't speak how I want to, yeah, um, yeah. Or, or something along those lines. Some uh, people were a little concerned about that, because mm. it's change, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But they have fully embraced it, because uh, the, the first few videos we got um, uploaded, and we'd get a complaint call in, well, your officer said this to me, he was rude to me. Um, I'm going to bring one up of, of Scott, actually, um, because it was the exact like reason we have these. A mom called and said that your officer was rude to my child, and da-da-da-da. I'm like, oh okay, um, I'm watching the video. Would, would you like to come see it? And it was the exact opposite. Scott was pleading with this kid, hey, don't make a bad choice. It, it wasn't like end of the world stuff, but uh, he, he was trying to prevent a bad situation mm-hmm. from happening. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, there's trouble there. Don't go do that. Yeah. Like, you're not in any trouble now. And it was like the kindest, like most preventative <laughs> police yeah, yeah. Uh, occurrence that you could have. But when... Um, the child came home uh, and told mom something different because right. ultimately they did later make a bad choice. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, when we can say, would you like to watch the video? Um, you know, that I, I haven't seen very many um, misunderstandings um, not cleared up by the video we have, if that makes sense. It's so it really does. Uh, especially, I think everybody has been in the he said, she said situ- situation before. This really gives some evidence to that. And, and cameras make cops better. Mm. Um, one, our investigations are better um, because we're human too, right? So yeah. we can go back and look at those videos. Um, sometimes you'll see a statement that, um, so I'm an investigation, so I'm a lieutenant mm-hmm. of investigations. I often will tell my guys, hey, go back review that video Mm -hmm. maybe there's a statement that was said that maybe because you're writing notes you're taking notes and things like that you go back and sometimes Mm -hmm. you'll miss a statement or how that person said it Mm -hmm. um also you know you're being recorded um so and we want to be as transparent as possible at the department and i think that's really important for the community to have trust in us and and we are transparent um so having every angle like this and every uh, and having recordings on our officers in our cars, um, we're willing to share those. You know, when we can, obviously per per state statute, we're going to share those, and and that's important for the community to have that trust with us too. We're going to share you, Scott. Uh, we're going to have to let you go for here because you're off to do something else. Uh, would you mind telling the audience what you're going to do? 
Yeah, I'm going to um, to a meeting at the family center, and uh, we are talking about sexual abuse and sexual assault. And uh, I think it's important, uh, you know, that the community knows that we work with many different departments and um, throughout the throughout the county. And so these are uh, meeting with several officers throughout the. Um, um, the county, including Marshfield, Rapids, mm-hmm. um, Pittsville, um, and then other agencies such as Marshfield uh, Medical Center and uh, First Health, uh, and then the Family Center and how we help uh, sexual assault victims uh, yeah. get through a, a bad situation. I hope I didn't put you on the spot there, no. but I just I just wanted to note that and pre- and just a kind of t- piggybacking off of where we started here with the uh, additional continued learning and the other side things that you guys do all the time that we don't again get a chance to touch. on very often uh, appreciate that scott appreciate the time today too uh safe travels out there we'll yeah, talk soon i appreciate it thank you we'll have uh take a quick time out check in with our partners we'll come back and have some more fun here on midday magazine at wfhr Welcome back, everyone, to Midday Magazine for this April 3rd, 2024. Have your host, James J. Mailoff, here, and we're joined by the Wood County Sheriff's Department. We have uh, Sheriff uh, uh, Quentin Ellis with us right now. Quentin, always good to see you. Thanks for being here. You bet. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the time. I um, want to get back into some of the tech with you and, and touch a, a couple of other random notes that we have. But uh, we just got done with an election, uh, a spring election here in Rapids and here in Wood County and really in, obviously in the state. But just focusing on Wood County here, um, all I can tell seemed like pretty smooth. Seemed like things went pretty well. Uh, how about from your perspective? Uh, very well. Uh, I met with our uh, security services lieutenant Brian Peterson this morning, which is uh, another addition the sheriff's department's made over the past four years to uh, keep our courthouse uh, uh, campus safe. Uh, we have a division of deputies assigned to that. He was in for um, the the ballot counting last mm-hmm. night, which is something that hadn't really been able or been provided before in the past. And, mm-hmm. and so the certain parts of the courthouse have to be open so that uh, people can, I guess, witness that. And, and again, that transparency of government. Um, so we do have security staff on site until I think it was 10 30, 11 o'clock last <laughs> night. Um, but he, he enjoys that stuff. And he said there was no problems that he was aware of. Uh, we have a great working relationship with Trent Minor, the county clerk. And um, you know, we do get uh, vigilant. I, I don't want to say nervous, but vigilant uh, around elections because um, in today's day, there are people that um, like to try and disrupt them. Um, we, we're hearing of um, security concerns for poll workers where, where, you know, unnamed substances, sometimes fentanyl, sometimes other stuff, uh, are being sent to locations um, that can disrupt an election. Um, and harm workers, and and that's that's just repulsive. You have people volunteering their time to to ensure one of the um, uh, democratic you know rights uh, yeah. of of our country are um, being upheld. People having their right to vote and should be able to do so safely. Um, and, and so, uh, fortunately, uh, we haven't had uh, concerns with that. Okay. Um, no reports that I saw of any uh, disruptions at a polling place. Um, or anything like that. So we're, we're fortunate. I, uh, I I always like to give be uh, transparent myself with the audience. And uh, did for note, my oldest daughter is a poll worker. She's been doing that, an election poll worker since uh, she was 18. She's been doing this. And uh, I, I've learned more about what uh, it is to be an election poll worker from her and, and talking with others in this job. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I put that ahead to say that I cannot think of many things that are more cowardly or un-American than messing with our democracy. It seems like the I don't know how more opposite you can get than, right. than, than being an American by messing with our democracy um and, and it, it's great to hear that this was a, a bit of a a, a calmer uh, election cycle so certainly a smaller one a spring election not as big as a presidential one but it will take the wins where we can get them right and, and and i think more and more normalcy only creates more of that we get back to kind of the way things were if you will in a way a new version of that right um where we treat each other with respect no matter who you're voting for right um right. they they're there it's a little hard to remember for some people out there but we come from a time where one one, we never really talked politics. Right. I wouldn't know who you were voting for. You wouldn't know who I was. And God help you if you asked that. Right. Like that. Right. That was one of the more like like whoa. You don't. You don't. I don't even know if I. You would ask a relative that, mm-hmm. let alone just somebody that you randomly knew. Right. But uh, certainly where. 
I don't remember growing up hearing a poll worker's life being threatened or a judge's life being threatened. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, different times, very different. And, and and I don't I don't like to be old man yelling at cloud or anything like that. Right. But this is one of those few things where I will be old man yelling at cloud and like we got to get back to some of this. Mm -hmm. and, and the only way to get back to that is some normalcy, is some of these things. Having more and more elections like yesterday go smoothly, where everybody is just kind of helping freedom ring. Right. And we do take that uh, seriously. Uh, we do provide extra patrols. We aren't going to station people at a specific polling place because that uh, creates some some feelings as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there's uh, threats or things like that, obviously they're not going to go unnoticed. But we do provide extra patrol around polling places during the hours on election days. And um, so it's certainly something that's on our radar. And again, we have a, an excellent working relationship with the county clerk. Um, so he keeps us informed of any potential threats or developments across the state just to, to make us aware. So, again, uh, you know, we can't preach it enough that team team approach extends beyond the sheriff's department to, to our other county uh, departments and the poll workers. And we just want everybody to be safe. Yeah. And, and, and it's great. Uh, well done by everybody, uh, everybody in the community, everybody that voted, the poll workers, everybody out there that made that happen. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, and, we, you know, we got a whole we got a long year ahead of us still. So let's keep that in mind, everybody, and keep uh, keep that theme up of treating each other with some respect uh, out there. We're speaking with uh, Quentin Ellis from the Wood County Sheriff's Department. And, and Quentin, we were talking tech earlier. Yes. And in that conversation, we got into a little bit of the budget. Mm -hmm. And I, I find budgets more interesting the older I get over, you know, the more I get older and stuff that because it's something I never really thought much about as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as an adult, I see the importance of being smart with your money. And you, you mentioned something that I, I believe Scott did too about, yeah, Scott did about making, getting you bang for your buck, mm -hmm. something everybody can relate to when it comes to, for you guys, one, um, the, the budget is different, obviously, uh, but you have to be so strategic with these things and, and then with the tech stuff you have to think ahead mm -hmm. and, and I, I how much does that play into the decision making of a budget and i not to put all this on you like it's just your decision but it, when you and your the team are, are discussing these things whose whose impact whose in opinions go into the budget decisions uh at the sheriff's department um you know we don't necessarily have the same day-to-day I don't interact with, say, a night shift deputy as much as I do Sean and Scott and yeah, Charlie, yeah. and that, and that's not um, for any reason other than just schedule design. Right, right. But uh, we do try to uh, allow certainly more input from what the staff needs hmm. um, as we uh, prepare our budget. Um, a big part of my position is I'm, I'm tasked with preparing the budget um, and managing it, but hmm. that's not a one-person deal. We're a team, right. um, so we'll sit down in like the Axon project. Um, was over three years in the making. I was working on gathering stuff for the team it, uh, when I was an operations captain, then chief deputy, Randy Dorhorst. Uh, was, I was bouncing numbers off of him. Sean, as sheriff, was was in the mix, um, certainly um, leading the way. He, he wants us to get with the times. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so it, as far as who has input, uh, it's, a, it's a team approach. Um, we sit down, uh, Sean has a whiteboard in his office, you know, these are our needs, these are our wants. And, and you're right, we have to research um, to get the best bang for our buck, because I'm not spending my money only, or, or, or we're not spending just the sheriff's department's money, it's taxpayer dollars. Yeah. Um, so when we go to our committee or to the county board saying we need to, to purchase X, Y, or Z, well, we want our, our I's dotted and our T's crossed that, yeah, we've looked for the best deal, we've found the best product, um, and, and this is why we need to do this. Um, and I believe our team has done an excellent job at that. We've really brought the department um, back to where it needs to be technologically and uh, with our staff. So uh, very proud of that. Mm. The uh, the camera the, the cameras that we were talking about earlier with Scott uh, and a big, big appreciation to him. I think he broke that down really good for us and explained it really well. The placements of those cameras is that something that's also there's being some uh, homework being done on like oh, we're we're not just throwing them up anywhere. It, it, how how are you deciding where to put those? Um, the investigative team um, really kind of led the charge on that as far as hot spots in the county or uh, significant areas of, of thoroughfare, whether uh, like a, a city or a village will generally try to um, address points of ingress and egress um, in and out of the, of the city or village. Yeah. County's a little more challenging, so mm -hmm. we're trying to uh, 
pick the best spots as far as coverage. Now you don't want five in one spot, no coverage in the southeast part of the county. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll be honest, out in certain areas, pretty rural, there's you're not going to get a lot captured with that. So you aren't getting a good return on your investment there. So uh, the investigative team met, um, they pared down some ideas, met with the operations captain, some of the patrol supervisors. And, and that's generally um, who's at the table, I will say, as far as the mm -hmm. meeting. But that's not to say they're the only ones with decisions sure. like if yeah. somebody from patrol says hey we've had a lot of problems in at this location you know that's going to get filtered into our meetings we meet monthly as an admin team uh, more frequently than that in, in smaller breakout groups so really um i can't say enough it's a, it's a definite team effort no we aren't just throwing darts at a board and go oh we'll put one there <laughs> yeah right, um, right. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're looking to get the, the most use out of them gotta admit that have been one of the more hilarious answers i would have gotten though if you're like ah we just kind of put we just yeah. I, we thought it looked good over here <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to go to county board and say like, oh, i don't know <laughs> no. I, I mean we we i, I threw a dart and that's what it was <clears> but no uh certainly very calculated and and certainly a program that uh uh, we'll evaluate uh, as we start to utilize it and, and then adjust from there. If it's successful, we'll look to expand it. If it's not, That's we'll move on. I was wondering uh, if, if we were going to allow for more cameras or the movement of the cameras we already have. If hey, it's not working very well here, maybe it'd be better suited here. That's certainly something we, with the budgeting process mm -hmm. um, that we do every year, we evaluate whether it belonged to a subscription service or a software bundle that does X, Y, or Z, we'll evaluate it. And is, is it worth it? And um, the guys and gals have been really good at, oh yeah, Q, this is, we need this. Okay. Price went up, but we need it. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. Or they've also come and said, no, that's kind of fallen off. Like that's not it anymore. There's a new trend that we need to move those dollars over here. Hmm. Okay, great. Um, so it, it is a, it's a, a living document. I never thought I'd be this, uh, into it you know yeah. i signed up to be a cop to do the swat stuff and all the right, fun right. stuff we talked about <laughs> earlier and now i joke that um uh, most days I need a calculator more than, than, than most of the gear I have. Right, on, right. So. <laughs> but it, that's, it, it speaks to the passion for the job, too. Like, uh, it, uh, to stay with something, even when it may be different than you expected, or you're wearing more hats than you expected. I can relate to that. I bet you Joe can relate to that, too, uh, as far as going into an industry with one in, thing in mind. And, mm -hmm. you know, years later, looking back at it, like, wow, I did not expect to end up here or have these tasks, but I, I welcome it. I'm good with it. Yeah, Sean uh, and I talk about that every Every now and again, we, you know, I don't want to say we're getting towards the end of our career, but as a, no. as a whole cycle, you know, we're probably closer to the end than the beginning. We kind of, you know, look at where the department was when we started, where it is now that we're in the positions we are. And I mean, we're very proud of it, but we're, we're not done growing. Yeah. And we want to make sure um, our team um, that maybe is a little long, younger than us will be around longer than us are, are set up well and, and, and keep moving forward. So. Uh, one of the things that um, I, I, I thought was noteworthy, it, it, talking with Sean from the first conversation and with you and, and so many people in the department, is the focus on mental health. And you touched on this a little bit earlier um, and the, the continuing uh, education, the continuing programming on that subject. Um, what are some of the ways that you are trying to do that, you and the team are, are trying to expand on that in, information and that knowledge? Um, so, like I mentioned before, we have almost all of our staff, uh, sworn and uh, civilian, in the jail through uh, crisis intervention team training. It's week-long training dealing with um, just what it says, crisis intervention, intervening in somebody's uh, when they're in crisis um, to get them connected with the proper resources so that they don't become involved in the criminal justice system. It's, it's getting somebody hooked up with um, counseling or uh, mental health help rather than, hey, they go to jail because no. they committed it by the black and white of the law a crime. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is, uh, I, I don't want to say basic because it's not mm. it's something that Sean has uh, really prioritized even when um, before he was sheriff. He was yeah. really leading the way with that. Um, not a lot of departments can, can say or boast like we can that uh, – majority of their staff are, are certified in it um, and have gone through that. That's something we're proud of. We've expanded our chaplain program to four chaplains working the county mm. um, to provide um, help to whether it be a death notification to, mm. to the community or our staff when we're going through some hard times. Um, we've added a mental health sergeant and Doug Christensen that was grant funded uh, for the first few years. Um, we have peer support teams uh, that people are trained in, uh, and most recently we've added a therapy dog uh, hmm, through grant funding. Right, yes. uh, Lola is a black lab. She's handled by Lieutenant Susanna Wagner in the jail, and like, uh, 
you want to talk about an instant impact mm-hmm. you know monday morning i haven't had enough coffee yet and i'm a little ornery because a bunch of bills are on the desk and lola walks in you you melt yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. okay day's fine there yep um so um even yesterday uh like to mention uh james one uh was a court officer um supervisor in the jail for, um he retired after 15 years of service to the county uh great guy uh, we're gonna greatly miss him um, but Lola was at the party and she's laying in the middle of the floor, uh, in front of everybody. And, and you see cops that are normally standing around and looking the part, sitting on the floor, rubbing her belly yeah. because it, it just, um, it's a big stress reliever. So outside of that, um, it's, it's just creating a culture of checking on each other and being there for each other and, and, and realizing that people in our community are, are going through stuff mm-hmm. as simple as that sounds. Mm-hmm. That wasn't law enforcement 20 some years ago. That was... Um, okay, you're acting up. I don't have any other options for you. You either go to jail or I leave. Um, and, and, and we're, uh, we're much more in tune as a department, as a profession now to, to the fact that, you know, there, there's more to why people are, are acting the way they are that, you know, that sometimes they're, they're going through stuff and maybe stuff we don't understand, but we recognize that and get them to the professionals that can. I think our society is better for that. Uh, that's an opinion, uh, you know, that uh, I feel that that's the case. Um, but uh, statistically, it's not an opinion that cr- that crime has. Uh, we are, are smarter with crime now. That the, the stats has spoken to this and across the country, especially especially here in Wisconsin. The more um, the departments focus on mental health, the more that we are seeing our. Uh, everything from uh, the amount of court cases that the judge sees to um, uh, bail, uh, 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 pay, different things. It affects almost everything. When you, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden you you change the approach, and it's not just black and white. You messed up. You go away. It's hey, why did you do this? It, it was the first conversation Sean and I had was was this, and um, I didn't know him from left to right. right. But as soon as he said that, I backed that man. Uh, and I will to the end of time, in part because this is so important going forward um, for everybody. You are uh, citizens, everybody going forward. Mental health is one of the bigger things we need to face. And I think as a society, we've done a good job talking about it. Mm-hmm. But now the real work comes in of not only giving each other grace and understanding this when you see something on the news and a person messes up or something like that. And in your head, not just going immediately to lock them up, throw away the key. But why did they do this? Right. Maybe you will get to that point of locking them up and throw away the key. There's still those kind of criminals out there. Mm-hmm. But there is also the type of criminal that is doing something oftentimes that they may not even realize what they're doing or, or the full length of what it is, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of depth to this. Crime is not black and white. Our approach to it shouldn't be. Right. And, and I believe our, our team has done uh, an excellent job in, in addressing that. Um, it used to be if, if one of our staff went to a bad call, maybe it was your first traffic fatality or something, you'd get the, the locker room. Hey, you good? There's only one way to answer that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm fine. Yep, yeah. I'm good. And you'd know the person might be struggling. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 and, and, and it's not always um, like you see on TV, like an yeah. instant shutdown um, mental health episode. But the person might not realize that it bothered them yet because yeah. it's new to them. They're processing it. So they, they handle that call and then they go on to the next. And, mm-hmm. um, but as a department with the knowledge and training that we've gotten in this, I believe we've gotten better at, at being able to follow up and, and yeah, I, you and I might be at a comment like, James, you good. And you'll mm-hmm. give me a, yeah. And then, okay. Cause we have people around, but then we circle back later and like, Hey, I know, I know that bothered you, man. Cause, cause we're tight. We're, we're a family mm-hmm. um, and we care about each other. And, and, um, We've done a, a good job as a team. We can always get better. We're always looking to get better, improve responses, uh, keep the, that training going. Um, again, developing our peer support. We're always looking for, uh, for ways to expand it. Um, and, and our admin team's done, done a great job at that. Uh, Sean leading the way. Um, we have uh, deputies involved, uh, supervisors involved. I know uh, Captain Hugesteger, Lieutenant Dorhorst are, are big time on um, on critical incident stress, Mm -hmm. uh, debriefs, um, the chaplain program, peer support. So when I start to talk about it, I get even more proud about our department, the the options that we have now that that weren't here when I started 
20 some years ago. Well, that again kind of ties back into what we were talking about, joking around with Joe and everything about how we, we go into these industries thinking we know the job to a degree and mm-hmm. what we'll be doing. And then you look a couple of years later, and I imagine psychology and, and thinking of mental health and a lot of those things was not something that you thought about going into the, this you know field. Not at all. And now yeah. it's a, a it's something that's trained. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, again, I, I give a, a ton of credit to, to Sean uh, when he was elected sheriff. And even before, I mean, it was a passion of his, but then leading the department, he's um, um, he's done it the right way, too. It isn't, uh, we're going to do this, get on board. I mean, he, he's uh, he's genuine and, and people are buying in. And, and that's good to see because that, that's when you get your best result is when people are bought in and, and I believe they are. Y'all are too humble for this. Uh, I'll say it, you're game changers. This is game changing. This is the way forward. This is how our society, this is how things get better, is things like this. People making decisions like Sheriff Becker and you and the team have made to, this is something we care about. We're going to put some time and energy into this. This is the definition of game changing. We want our society to feel more closer to our our armed forces, our, our police departments, our fire departments, all of these things. How do you build that bridge? This is part of how you build that bridge. How we become a safer society and a stronger one. We're better together. We're better when we work together Uh, that's what's going on here that's what's happening here and it's uh, you're you're proud i'm proud Uh, i i think it's pretty darn cool and i uh, as a kid coming from my background i never thought i'd be at this point I, I never saw that coming, so I'm thankful for it. And while we appreciate uh, the approach that uh, the Sheriff Becker and that your team f- takes to a mental health, it's just as important for us as society. If we want you guys to do that, we got to do it for you guys. Right. We have to also understand that this is not a cookie cutter situation. Almost any crime, any situation you guys show up for, uh, there's also every day it feels like more and more being put on your plate. Understanding that that what that is like, having some empathy for those things it has to go both ways it it can't just be we expect you guys to have it for us we've got to be able to do that going for going forward both ways and and i'm I'm not saying this is preaching it's something that i had to learn to do too Uh, it's something that i've grown into and i think a lot of people have as we've gone more forward and that's happened in part because it all is connected in Mm -hmm. part because of the work that you guys are doing uh it's pretty cool to see when you take a step back and and see how this is evolving that we're in the middle of this as it's happening 20 years from now people are going to look back at this and see this as a game changer i appreciate that it's very kind of you mm. um uh yeah it means a lot that's that's what we're here for i was just reading the script sean gave me i did that's, that's <laughs> i thought yeah. i did a pretty good job with that as an actor no i'm kidding i'm kidding uh but he would get <laughs> sean would write anything like that it's too right. humble um right. always appreciate the time quentin uh, uh thanks god again for us and your whole team over there uh, as we're wrapping up was there anything else you wanted to touch on um, you know, I just, uh, I'd like uh, to make sure we give credit where credit's due. Uh, this big Axon project is quite the undertaking, a lot of moving parts. Uh, our operations captain, Charlie Hugesteiger, is doing a, a phenomenal job taking mm-hmm. that over. It's a lot. It, it doesn't sound, when, when you say tasks of, oh, well, we had to get them installed in the cars. Well, he's coordinating our whole fleet of squads, making sure the next shift has squads for patrol. These are getting the cameras installed, troubleshooting with our IT department, working with the vendor. He, he's got a lot of irons in the yeah, fire. He's put yeah. a, lot of, a lot of long hours in getting that done, so I appreciate that. Kelvin Dorhorst has helped him along the way. Scott Goldberg with the Flock program. And, and again, I give a shout-out to, to Sean. Um, it's easier when he's not here because oh, yeah, yeah, otherwise he, he, he likes to tease me and I deserve <laughs> it. But, um, yeah, the direction he's taken us and, and uh, our department, uh, we're better for him. So I second that. Uh, and I, I also want to add a thank you to our friends at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media and the great work that you guys do. A big thank you to you. Uh, we'll have more Midday Magazine for you tomorrow right here on WFHR. We are locally grown radio.